Greetings, and welcome to the Saved by Nostalgia podcast. I love the power glove. It's so bad. No! I feel the need. The need for speed. Sweep the leg. You have a problem with that. Better alive, you are coming with me. Look I what you it. did, you little jerk. Look. I'm coming to get you. Get busy living. You get busy dying. You are next. And the thing is, after all these years, I still look back with wonder. Well, Noah, I don't want to set the stakes too high, but what's about to unfold? is the gold standard when it comes to Saved by the Bell podcast. This is Saved by Nostalgia, and we are on Saved by the Bell Season 3. It's Episode 1. We are here for the fabulous Belding Boys. No, we've been waiting on this one for a long time. This is an episode literally seven months in the making. We had to take a few months off from doing the podcast for one reason, and that is Broad Belding, and you're going to hear the story and how it all unfolded right here on Saved by Nostalgia. Thanks so much for joining us. Wow. This is a big one, a pivotal episode, and wow, do we have a story to go along with it. Absolutely. We are talking about the middle of November here. This all started back on April 5th when we reached out to none other than Ed Blatchford, who played Rod Belding in The Fabulous Belding Boys. And like you said, it has taken seven plus months to finally snag the great white, and boy, we have snagged him. You know what else? is going to be sort of revealed here. Obviously, Ed Blatchford has, uh, you know, embraced the Rod Belding character. Um, he's done, uh, been a part of a documentary called Saved by the Belding. There's other people that have recognized him as this sort of like cult status because of this episode. And it's one of the reasons why this episode's so important to us growing up. It's just one that stands out. It's, honestly, as we're standing right now, if I had to pick my favorite episode of Saved by the Bell, it's this one right here and it's coming up. And uh, you're going to hear the whole story about how Ed Blatchford almost Rod Belding to us and <laughs> how basically we're going to talk to Ed later, how he basically admits that he is basically Rod Belding in life and that he would have done the same things Rod Belding did in this episode. There is some really revealing stuff here and uh, how the interview almost didn't happen. We waited as long as we could. Uh, after hearing from, you know, talking to Ed here and there for the last seven months, he'd said he would do it. We were contacted by his son who said, let's set this up. Ed would like to do it. And then we weren't hearing back. We weren't sure what was going to happen. We would make posts on our social media that Ed would like and then wouldn't answer us back. Ed is Rod Belding. That's what we learned here. And we're going to, you're going to hear all about it later on once we get through the meat of this episode. Absolutely. I mean, he embraces it. He embraces the fact that he is Rod Belding. He would do the exact same things. And we had an interview set up and he was going to be in traffic and we wanted to do some something special in the interview that you'll hear later on. And we just didn't feel like in the car was the perfect spot for it. So maybe that's a little bit on us. Maybe we Rod Belding, Rod Belding a little bit there. Uh, but we wanted to wait until he was nice and settled in. And so it went on for several more months of us contacting him, him contacting us, just kind of a little back and forth and then some long spans in between. But finally we said, hey, Ed, we're doing the episode. It's happening. Are you in or are you out? And both of us thinking... This is Rod Belding. We're not hearing back. He's gone. He's off with Inga somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> he messaged back. He's in, folks. We got Rod Belding. Well, speaking of that, we're going to go ahead and before we get to the end of the episode and yes. kind of what happens, we got to get to our interview with Ed Blatchford, Rod Belding himself, and kind of culminate this whole journey, seven months in the making. Um, we just were able to tape this just um, a couple days ago. Uh, incredibly, after seven months of sort of Ed kind of playing Rod Belding, <laughs> uh, on us he doesn't do a lot of these kind of interviews so we definitely understand um and this sort of helps bring in perspective the whole th this whole thing a little bit of life imitating art here a little bit of life imitating art um and how kind of he feels about the rod building character and how he feels about what rod kind of did to the kids also the general stuff about how he got into the show and meeting peter engel and the casting director say by the bell he just wanted a, a gig and uh, he never knew that it would uh, kind of change his life. So let's get to this uh, interview. Um, I can't tell you how much it means to us to have done this. And stay tuned to the very end. There's a, a wonderful treat at the end that you just probably won't believe. Well, no. 
You know, um, we were just—I was just down there in L.A. and uh, obviously it's gone now. But the Save by the Max uh, restaurant was down there. I didn't know if you ever got a chance to check yeah. it out. Did you go there? Yeah, I, w- I went right before it cl- before it closed in March. Yeah, it was really great, wasn't it? It was awesome. Did you, so you got a chance to check it out? I went with uh, Troy Froman, who played Ox on the show. There was a bunch of cast members that that went. Did you? So yeah, that's cool. You got a chance to check it out. Yeah. I... I was supposed to go, but I, I decided not to go. I, you know, I, I'm, not, I'm not big on this, as you know, but, you know. Well, um, this, but it's okay. Everything's good. Yeah, Ed, I, I did go there and had a great time. Yeah. Ed, um, <laughs> you're... You know, we've been doing this show, and we, we've had a lot of great guests f- from the cast of Stay by the Bell, but there's this is sort of a, a unicorn for us, because Rod Belding is sort of a, a character that took on a life of its own. Just talk about your experience Hello? being Rod Belding these years. There's been a documentary made. This is a very strange phenomenon that's existed based on your character, Rod Belding. It's, a, it's hilarious, because <laughs> it was the first job I ever had as an actor, a professional job in L.A., and I came from Chicago as a theater artist, and I, I did a lot of some movies and stuff and before this. And I moved, I finally moved to L.A. as a young man to pursue acting, and it was my first job that I ever got. I remember Robin Lippin was the casting director; she's fabulous, and I did it. Just, I mean, it was not exactly what my dream job was, but I needed to start getting some credits, professional credits, you know, and. Um, you know, we kind of, I think we did, it was great, it was over, you know, then when the show was canceled, all of a sudden, nostalgia, like, you know, 10 years later, 15 years later, all of a sudden nostalgia starts, you know, taking place, and people are starting to think about the different characters, and the show, and missing the show, and it did, it, it became kind of, uh, what would you say, kind of a cult classic, really, and my character did too, and I had no idea what was going on, I was, listen, the reason I don't do stuff like this is because I was pursuing, you know, I was in a, you know, working with Daniel Day Lewis and Last of the Mohicans, yeah. and I was working, I mean, I was doing some, you know, great movies, you know, and uh, TV shows and stuff. And this was just like a sidebar for me. But out of all the stuff I've done, this has got the most attention. And I can't tell you how funny it is for me, everywhere I go, you know, and people, it's, it's not so much now, but I'm 62 years old. But back when I was like 50, and I'd go to like grocery stores, and the mothers would be there to be 40 years old. They'd be like, oh, I got you right, Beldy, that type of thing. And I was like, I've done all this great work in stage and theater and movies and TV, and this is what I'm getting known for. So, you know, I succumb to it. I succumb. Well, that, that... actually, it, it's been wonderful. So much of those guys in Texas who approached me about that little documentary that they did. And they sent it to me, and I thought it was great. I can't remember what name of it was. It Saved by the Belding, was it? Is that what it was? Yeah. And then I said, hey, this is good, but let's do this. Let's do another one. And I said, it up. let's collaborate. Let's do another one. And that was the one that went to the L.A. Comedy Film Festival yeah. stuff. And um, it was actually pretty good, I thought. It was pretty funny, you know. So I have embraced it. Well, it's it's very cool. I mean, honestly, like the I I remember making the connection because I'd seen the episode, and then I remember seeing you in Nowhere to Run. I was a huge Van Damme fan, yeah. and I love that right. movie. And I love. I was like, that's Rod Belding, um, <laughs> which yeah. is funny again. Yeah. Going, but yeah, so th- that was great. I mean, Last of Mohicans is, uh, is unbelievable, and you yeah. great stuff. Like, so you have the yeah. chops. You've been around. You've done so many great things, and I think that the common thread here is that many actors that we've talked to have the exact same story as you about this yeah. just kind of being a one-off, a random episode, a random thing. And it, it, it's just so amazing how it s- explodes into an uh, American lexicon. And you're a part of that. And you know what? That's great. Yeah. Well, you have to, as a young actor, you know, you need work, you know, and you have to learn how to work. And, um, that was a great spot. Peter Engel was a great guy. Um, you know, he cast me in a bunch of stuff later on, you know, as uh, in Malibu CA, I played the dad, Peter Collins, I think it was. And I did, uh, I did three or four other shows of his as guest star. <clears throat> so he was really good to me, and he was great. Whenever I was out of work, he always had a job for me. And, uh, yeah, he, he's a great guy. He's a great guy, and all those kids were good, too. 
were they were great people to work with, Mario, everybody. They were great, and um, it was good. It was a good experience. Talk a little bit more about that, kind of the audition process and your interactions with Peter Rangel and some of the cast and crew, Dennis Haskins, and of course the kids that were in school at the time, so kind of offset, you didn't get a lot of chance to uh, mingle and interact with them, yeah. but Dennis Haskins, Peter Rangel, what are your memories of them? Well, yeah, I mean, I came in and, uh, you know, we were just cranking it out back then, they were just cranking out episodes, so I came in as a guest star, we cranked it out, and I didn't talk to Peter again for, I don't know what think about this and probably for five or six years maybe or maybe more than that but all of a sudden I got a phone call from him that I, he goes I want you to play the dad in Malibu CA I go okay let's do it <laughs> and uh, it was a great it was fun great part you know and actually I think I think that is a great cult, uh, cult uh, theory seriously Malibu CA you guys are familiar with that yeah yep yes definitely I mean, if you watch that stuff, I mean, that's, that's goofy fun. That's almost yeah. like the Oligan's Island type culty, you know. Stuff. <laughs> it is. Surprised if, if later that became bigger. That was a great dad. It was a lot of fun. So he, was, he was great. You know, Peter, he was great. He knew exactly what he wanted to do. Um, you know, he, he kind of got caught in like a little bit of a formula. And um, I, I think that hurt him in the end because I thought that this, if they well stepped out a little bit on this Malibu CA and made it a little bit edgier, you know, it, it would have been better. But, um, but still, it was great. We had two seasons on it. But, and uh, I think I did the basketball one. I can't remember all their names. But he, he was great. And the, 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 the casting, casting Robin Lippin, I think was the casting director. Yeah. It was my first, it was my first job in L.A. I went in there and did it and I got the job. I was so excited. I think I was like, you know, 30 years old. I come from Chicago. Maybe I was younger even. I can't remember. But uh, it was great. It was great. They were great to work with. But then I got to know everybody later when I did Malibu CA. That's when I really got to know everybody. Like Mario. I love Gilbert. The guy just does a production manager named Gilbert, mm -hmm. who was Mario's cousin, actually. I can't remember his last name. But we were all best friends. We had a great time. We partied hard, man. <laughs> good time <laughs> in LA. We all had a good time with all young people. So, I mean, you're right. The kids were young at that time, so I mean, they were kids. So, you know, I, I didn't really uh, mingle with them, but they were very professional. They were really good. You know, they were great. Yeah, talk a little bit about your character, Rod Belding, in the show. Uh, in the show, you say you believe the teacher-student relationship should be based on trust, but you're doing things I don't think you're allowed to do, like rip up midterms and just give the kids grades, whatever they feel. And you're trying to be friends with them instead of their teacher, but then at the end, you let them down. You're just a sub. You're in and out, and you get kicked out of the school yeah. by your brother. Talk about kind of the relationship uh, with Rod and the students. Well, that was just horrible. I mean, it was so sad, but, you know, listen uh Rod was a player, you know, and he, he didn't have time for, like, these students. He's a player, man. So, you know, when you have a hot babe like Inga, who you have an <laughs> opportunity to take, take advantage of, you go for it, right? I mean, I'm surprised that, you know, heck, I look back on it, it would have been funny if Inga showed up with me at the end, and Inga was with me. That would have been the best play. Yes. You know? <laughs> I come, I'd be coming to Dennis Casting and say, listen, this is Inga, I'm going to leave it. Can you blame me? <laughs> I definitely wanted to meet Inga. And you know what's funny about this is, you know, seeing this as a kid, but th this is kind of heavy for Say by the Bell because it was a Saturday morning show. But really, there's a lot of deeper issues here because you think about being a naive uh, kid and kind of trusting adults. It sort of shows you that relationship and kind of how to be a little bit, uh, you know, questioning of adults and their authority and kind of how they can use kids to prop themselves up and kind of make themselves look better only to kind of drop them when, when they don't need them anymore. I mean, it's kind of a heavy issue and a heavy topic. Well, it turns out maybe you're right because it obviously rang true to a lot of people. I mean, you know, I, I don't follow up on this stuff a lot, but sometimes I do. I'll, I'll go on and look at, like, YouTube and some of the reactions of, like, some of the Rod Belding, you know, like, stuff on YouTube. And there are a lot of people who are looking up that, you know, it cracked me up that uh, Rod would leave with Inga, which I, as Ed Blackford, I would love to think of without a problem. <laughs> 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 I don't understand this, you know, what this moral problem was at all. But, uh, you know, and Dennis, you know, I mean, the funny thing is we don't look anything alike. No. <laughs> <laughs> That's why we don't ever 
you know, thought that, you know, that we were brothers, really. I mean, everyone thought that maybe I was the adopted son or something. But, um, yeah, no, I don't know. Yeah, it was, it was, I think, a good story about responsibility and what's important, you know, and, and having fun is great, but you can't have fun all the time, you know. You can't just pursue fun. Right or your will, you, know, you just can't pursue your will all the time. Yeah, absolutely. And I think that, yeah, you have to have responsibility and go back. And ultimately, Dennis is the hero because he really loves the kids, and he was for the kids, you know. But I have to tell you, I thought our our documentary, right, we did, our little thing, was really funny. Where he we meet up, it's like real life. You guys saw that? Did you see it? Yeah. Yeah, it, it blew my mind when I first saw it because I'm just like, God, there's like people out there that kind of think the same way that I do about this character that's just etched in my memory. And then they see yeah. they found you and did their, you know, it's just it's crazy and what a phenomenon it is. It was so funny, and I'm glad that happened because it it it, it brought that to the the forefront and people yeah. always remember it. And it's hilarious, yeah. and that was cool that you did that because obviously you don't, you know, this you don't do a lot of interviews or talk about that a whole lot. I mean, that's pretty cool. Yeah, yeah it's great. I mean, it really, it was, it was a lot of fun. The guys who did it, Scott Hamilton, I think he's the lead guy. Um, I wrote it with him. And it was really a lot of fun. And it was a lot of fun. Because just making, it's kind of a the satire on the people who love the show, right? I mean, that's what it is. The people who find that the show kind of has a pulse status. It really is kind of a, a little bit of a satire on that, you know? And the idea that that they can't separate reality at Blatchford from Rod Belding, right? That's what it's all about. <laughs> kind of, right? But then we, Rod Belding does the same thing. I mean, Ed Blatchford does the same thing Rod Belding would have done anyway. He leaves them all at the restaurant. Right? <laughs> <laughs> I, thought, I thought it was funny, man. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. What are you guys doing? Where are you guys? We're in Kansas City, Missouri, so uh, we're, we're, it's about 22 degrees outside, so I'm thinking that you're probably yeah. in, having a little better than us right now. So. We're at 80, 80 degrees. That's yeah. No, I, I remember those days just two weeks ago, but uh, in the Midwest, yeah. you'd never know. Rub it in, Rod. Rub yeah. it in. <laughs> how, how, how was your trip out here, all right? I love it. Yeah, I go out there about once or twice a year. Uh, I've got some good friends out there. We always hit, you know, Santa Monica, the usual spots. Uh, and uh, Fro- we hit up Froman's Deli. Troy Froman's a good actor from uh, from Saved by the Bell, and he has a deli there in yeah. Santa Monica. So, oh, he does. Where's the deli? Yeah, it's it's right on Santa Monica Boulevard, right near the pier. Froman's Deli. Well, you should the Broadway Deli. It's called Froman's. Froman's Deli. Not Froman. Yeah, Froman. Yeah, it must have changed. I think it was the Broadway Deli for a while. It's the same place. I don't know. It, it's it's wow. great. I, I it's it's something you know, and a lot of people we talk to love living there. There's so many reasons why people love it and why people hate it. It's I can I get it. Like you got the traffic and it's congested, but yeah. man, yeah. Um, yeah. I yeah. was out there for the Mot- Motley Crue concert a few years ago. A lot of a lot of it, entertainment yeah. options. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So you gotta call me next time you come in. Yeah, man. Yeah, yeah, definitely will, and let, um, and maybe we could even plan it to where you could uh, not show up. You could show up, you could leave with Inga and not make it to the to lunch, <laughs> and leave us yeah. in the lurch like Rod Belding would. No, I'll leave you. I'll leave you the bill. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that would be perfect. I say I, I say I have to go to the bathroom, and I'll leave you the bill. <laughs> <laughs> oh God, that would be a story that uh, no one would ever believe. Um, yeah. Yeah. So, hey, okay. my beautiful wife just walked in. Say hello to her, Laura. Laura, hello. You, Hi. But, uh, Who is this? This is Clinton Noah from Save by Nostalgia interviewing your wonderful husband about uh, his some of his great movie roles and television roles. Oh, great. <laughs> How are you guys doing? We're great. We're th- so, this a little is, cold here in Kansas City, Missouri, but we're making it. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Are you guys freezing? Yeah, it's a paltry uh, 18 yeah. degrees here in, in Missouri. <laughs> oh. in the, Hey, oh, uh, you, you should have done this interview in person. I, exactly. We, <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> we, we, will, we will have to do that next time we're out. You know, we get all the seasons here in Missouri, though. We will say that we get all the seasons, even if most of them are yeah. horrible. <laughs> exactly. So why don't you guys come out here and move out here? Why don't you guys give me the capital there thing to visit? It's expensive to live there, Ed. My goodness, like... It's 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 expensive to live there, you know. You know how it is. Are you going to put us up? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's, it's too expensive here. Yeah. You're right. 
What part? What part well, of I LA? A, I have a, I have a, uh, I have a back room called the Street Room. Perfect. Um, yeah, we'll take it. What? Yeah, it's called, it's called the, it's called the Street Room, and you guys can have that. What? Stays That's hilarious. What, what part of LA do you guys live in? We live in Orange County, actually, outside of Newport Beach. Oh, okay, so you're up there. Okay, perfect. See, so you're away from yeah. the city. That's per. That's a good spot. Yeah, you're. Yeah. yeah. That's we're great. Way, we're a little bit out of the way. It's crazy. Well, I'll tell you what, it, uh, we're definitely going to gonna have to hit you up next time we're, we're out that way. It's a, it's a great place to, to, to visit. We'll definitely do that. Uh, and I tell you what, yeah. before we let you go, we've teased it. Our, our audience is, is, is just anticipating it. We've sent you the script. Okay. We've got to do this one last time. You take me on. The, you got to get in character. We, we're going to get Jin character, and we're going to do I'm this in right. Character, but you got you better be on your best shot here. You better be ready. Okay, Noah yeah. here is going to play uh, Mr. Belding, and we're going to roll it. Okay, why run through it once? I mean, I, I mean, I'm the professional. I can do it once, but I'm we can do about it. you. One take. We got it. We're going to do this. Okay. 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 Good. All right. You ready? Yeah, I'm ready. Okay, go. I cannot believe you're doing this. The class trip leaves in five minutes. These kids are depending on you. Come on, Richie. Don't get over it. They look up to you. What is so important that you would disappoint 30 kids? Richie, if you met this stewardess, you'd know. You're doing this to spend time with some stewardess? It's not just some stewardess. This is Inga. She's only in town for this weekend. See, I knew. I knew it was a mistake to let you come to my school. You promised me you would change, but no, you are the same rod. You get people's hopes up and then you let them down. Richie, she's gorgeous. You should see her. She's a 10. Is that what you're going to tell the kids? That you dumped them for some weekend fling? Of course not. Tell them I'm sick. Tell them anything. Cover for me. I'm tired of covering for you. Come on, Richie. Don't be mad. We're brothers. Get out of my school, Rod. Scene. Oh, that's so heavy. That's so heavy, man. <laughs> <laughs> I loved it. Wow. Hey, good job. Thank good you. Good that, that was Noah. I'll tell you what, me, I, I don't know if I could have pulled that one off as good as Noah did. That was great, just hearing that. Um, Noah was good. Really good. See? It's what, one take yeah. Noah. That's what they call him. He, yeah. Fully impressed. Fully impressed. Well, Ed, that, that was just amazing i we can't thank you enough for for talking to us and for taking us back and for being a good sport about it we're going to be cheering yeah. for, we're going to cheer be cheering for your michigan state Spartans the rest of the way we're going to get them an offense and get them back rolling man i tell you what if it's yeah, the last thing we, we do just, we're on basketball right now we forgot about football we're I, on basketball. <laughs> well that's fine too yeah. the, 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 it was preseason number one and they have already lost lost a game but you know what tom Izzo doing what Who he they does lose to? uh kentucky Who they, lose to? they lost to kentucky yeah. that's Kentucky just lose to Evansville? Yes. Oh, man, it was ridiculous. <laughs> I couldn't believe it. Exactly. Yeah. Well, Ed, All right, boys. thanks so much, Great man. Great talking to you. Call me anytime, and uh, good luck to you both. You bet. Thank you. It was an absolute honor. we got to do this in person sometime, Ed. Anytime, buddy. Just call me. Thanks a lot. Will do. No, I don't know how we can finish the episode now, because <laughs> you were citing the lines with Ed Blatchford. I'm sitting here in awe, like... This is really happening. You did the end scene already. We know how the the, the episode ends, but you did the, the the famous lines there. What was that like for you? Oh, man, it was nerve wracking. I had goosebumps doing it. Like I had dreamed about for seven months from the very first moment we tried to get Ed Blatchford to do this interview with us. This had been in my mind doing this scene with him. I probably bugged him about it, hounded him about it. Um, I was persistent with it. Uh, sent him numerous emails with the lines written out word for word. I had to go pause the episode, write down, and then I'd forget half of it halfway through and have to <laughs> rewind and do it again. I got it all down word for word, sent it to him numerous times. We reminded him of the interview before we did it, told him, hey, we're doing this scene. He was a little apprehensive about it at first. I brought it up to him, and he's like, ah, I don't know about that, man. I, I, I don't know about doing that scene. But we got it. We did it. It went wonderfully I was so nervous because, like he said in there, he's putting pressure on me. He's like, hey, do we need to run this through? I'm the professional here. Do we need to run this through, Noah? Are you going to get this? And you also put a little – you said, I'm one take, Noah. (laughs) (laughs) And so I said, all right, let's do it one take. And it couldn't have gone better. And it was an honor. It's something – like 
it's one of those huge moments in my life. Yeah. Like it may seem silly to someone listening. I don't know, but for me, it was a huge moment. It's like being at an AFC Championship game, even though we lost. Hypothetical. Yeah, very hypothetically. Just all the people we've been able to interview on this podcast, on our sports podcast, meeting people, doing films, all that we do. And this it ranks right up there with it. It was unbelievable. It was great. You did a wonderful job. I could definitely not have done it better at all. That, so it, just the fact that we got to the heart of the matter with Ed about how basically, you know what, he sort of sees himself as sort of a Rod Belding. Like he would have run off with Inga. Yeah. He would have left the kids in the lurch. He, if we go meet him out there, he'll leave us with a check and run off. Yeah, and, we've already yeah. got that uh, <laughs> planned. Bring so, a little extra money with us when we go to L.A. So. so that was one of the biggest interviews. I mean, I, people, you have no idea. When we started doing this podcast, we started getting a list of interviews, interviewees together, like who we want to do. And we have huge ones coming up. Guys, this season and beyond, you're not going to believe it. We've got writer Bennett Tramer. We have Eddie Garcia, who played Johnny Dakota, coming up. We have Tori herself, Leanna Creel, Tori Scott. This show is blasting off into cyberspace.